Hey everybody, I'm Steve Brodner. Um, different from some of these colleagues of mine uh, who are real cartoonists, and I am uh, a person who's been unemployed for 40 years, uh, which means I'm a freelance, and which means that I have been uh, published and making my living in New York as a guy who works at various places at various times. And if all goes well, I'm constantly doing that, paying all my bills. Um, and the trick has been to do that while saying things that I care about deeply. Uh, and also to be doing pieces that qualify as illustration, which means too many hours, too much coffee, <coughs> not enough sleep. Um, but uh, the, uh, the point of, of making your, your points with your pictures is uh, the focus of my life. And uh, I'm very extremely lucky to be able to do that. I'm going to take you through a small tour, I hope as short as possible, I'm going to speak quickly. Um, pictures that I've done, pictures that I'm proud of, pictures that have brought me some grief, and some topics that I thought we might discuss when we're all done with this. Um, so this is all from the perspective of a freelance illustrator. <clears throat> I've worked for Esquire, The New Yorker, Rolling Stone, been regular in those places, uh, now regular in the nation, the LA Times. Some of the work I've done has been direct and to the point, as I prefer. Mostly, however, I would say not. This is because what uh, I call uh, a, the most prevalent form of censorship in the United States, which is not political, but rather the commercial straitjacket. And that's what I want to discuss today. Here's a piece done at the time of the U.S. not-so-secret funding of Contras in El Salvador and death squads in Nicaragua. I did this piece on my own and tried to sell it. As it turned out, it was turned down by the mainstreams and read and run instead at Harper's Magazine, which made me happy. Yeah. This was how Ronald Reagan was largely pictured in the press early in his administration. Youthful, vigorous, healthy, and come to the rescue of America. This wasn't true, but nobody wanted to spoil the story for many reasons. And criticism of the president was on lockdown and remained that way for six or so years. This piece was done at the end of the administration when his reputation was foundering and his judgment was being, for the first time, widely criticized. I still have this, had this idea killed by Texas Monthly. Of course, that magazine is an expensive coffee table magazine for wealthy coffee tables in Houston and Dallas, filled with ads for diamonds and cars. Bush was one of their own, and they were loath to go there, but Mother Jones did run it. When the Iran-Contra scandal broke, Google that if you don't know what that was. <laughs> My job got easier. And this ran in the Washington Post. A piece I might have done at that time, but can do now, is this one, a kind of illustrated infographic of how many Wall Street creatures came to work in the Reagan administration. Uh, now that I'm doing a book on the presidents, this can be t told. Here's a recent piece on Rush Limbaugh for the nation. As adventurous as they are, they would probably not have accepted Tush Limbaugh for the nation. Uh, this seemed perfectly tasteful to me, uh, but was killed by Mother Jones. That means you can't run it anywhere. Race is a determining factor. Race has always been a problem in self-censorship. Harold Washington, the first African-American mayor of Chicago, was uncaricaturable most of the time, mostly because editors wanted no possible accusation of racial caricature. How do you differentiate between racial and individual parody? Our history of racial stereotyping, especially in entertainment, took care of that and left that ghost to haunt us to this day. That is the reason that Barack Obama is one of the least caricatured of all modern presidents, at least in the mainstream media. And here is an acceptable one for the New Yorker, uh, where you can draw him from a one-quarter view. This piece was commissioned by the New Yorker for a George Packer article on a man's anguished story of his dead son killed in Iraq. After many direct ideas, the New Yorker, in their way, green-lighted a piece that showed soldiers getting off a transport in Baghdad. My 12-year-old daughter at the time was walking past the drawing table. I said, Terry, what does this mean to you? And she said, oh, that's easy, lambs to the slaughter. I knew right then it would be killed, and it was. It was not the time yet for anti-war art, even though that article was deeply anti-war, if you read it all the way through. We might discuss the differences between written expression and drawn expression, how the same thing said by both 
types of artists uh, will be accepted and read differently by an editor. The trunk now is another story. Uh, it has always been open season on him. Trump art is never censored. Here's a piece from the 1980s that I did for Spy Magazine. He, they were speculating that he would run for president. Can you imagine? 1988. Uh, so uh, a good question to talk about is why is it okay to do Trump? This piece from last summer, Time Magazine, is one of what is now a growing collection of Trumps for me. It's a result of a completely hands-free policy that will never go with regards to Obama. Why is this? Another thing we can talk about. I suspect that the press still sees him as a joke. When you have a man who is a living cartoon, why not call cartoonists to portray him? <laughs> this done for the nation just a few weeks ago. Got thousands of shares on Facebook. Some people disliked any use of the swastika, feeling that it only belonged in books about one particular piece in history, place of time in history. I disagree. Here's why. Trump is presuming, under the guise of a Borscht Belt Comedy Act, the policies of hard-right European racist parties. We may be coming to a time when the GOP will have to rise up and call it what it is. The problem is that the day after, they may discover that they don't have a GOP anymore, and that it has been Trumpized for some time, and they're only now seeing the truth of it. This is for the LA Times, a meaningless picture that shows how far you can go with Donald Trump. Actually, it did have a caption. It did have a meaning, but I'm not going to bother with it right now. Some heroes for our discussion, Art Young was prosecuted under the Espionage Act. As Mr. Snowden well knows, it started during World War I, landed many people in jail, including Eugene V. Debs. Young escaped due to a hung jury. Brad Holland had this image nearly killed by the progressive, a portrait of Pinochet, dictator of Chile, <coughs> Chile with skulls for teeth. The editor told the legendary art director, Patrick J. B. Flynn, if that runs, you're fired. Flynn said, it runs, and I quit. Brave guy. Holland never worked for the progressive again. John Hartfield, the greatest collagist of all time, fled Germany when the Nazis made it too hot for him. David Levine, my hero, gave people fits with his Kissingers. New York Times op-ed killed this. He vowed never to work for them again. And uh, one of his famous stories by Victor Navasky, the nation ran this, but it brought an in-house tempest, as feminist writers objected. Oh. Ali Farzat, Syrian cartoonist abducted by police who broke both of his hands. Naji Ali, Palestinian cartoonist murdered by unknown assassins. We must remember Charlie Hebdo artists, brave and funny bunch, caught in a vice of misunderstanding and intolerance. Here was my answer to the killing, a version of that piece that I redrew just for this talk because uh, Trump needed to be included. Uh, a year ago, he wasn't a factor. Um, but in this particular case, um, I showed the mechanism between the extreme right and the Muslim right each feeding each other's <coughs> needs. And here's another point of discussion, what this means. I'm assuming it is making fun of people who believe that the little baby would be, by nature of his faith, a cologne groper. And how almost nobody sees that message. When does de-skilling fumble your art? I hope we can tackle much of this uh, as we proceed today. Thank you all very much.